here today's topic the christian and psychology part two what we are going to cover today is all undue anxieties dismissed training the soul by discipline christ has power to invigorate and restore either god or satan controls every sin cherished weakens the character the teacher's psychological qualification, and men to become a new creature. Part 1. All undue anxieties dismissed. When men go forth to their daily toil, as when they engage in prayer, when they lie down at night, and when they rise in the morning, when the rich man feasts in his palace, or when the poor man gathers his children about the scanty board, each is tenderly watched by the Heavenly Father. No tears are shed that God does not notice. There is no smile that He does not mark. If we would but fully believe this, all undue anxieties would be dismissed. Our lives would not be so filled with disappointment as now, for everything, whether great or small, would be left in the hands of God, who is not perplexed by the multiplicity of cares, or overwhelmed by their weight. We should then enjoy a rest of soul to which many have long been strangers. Steps to Christ, page 86. Yes, the, the anxieties that occur today there are many people that have anxieties and that have depression and what we don't understand is the source of anxiety can be destroyed if we go to the source of the remedy which is God himself. And usually what we do is we go to people that have studied psychology or have a license but even these people, if they don't have God in their lives, they can't really help you get better. You know, I mean, they can, I'm not going to say they cannot help you get better, but you will be lacking something. They can try to work things with you, but ultimately, if you don't go to the source, which is God, you're always going to need to have uh, other problems coming up. Uh, I, I hope that we all get to know that if we need this to be solved once and for all that we go to the source of remedy which is god himself part two training the soul by discipline christians is christ revealed in us we must labor to have sound bodies and strong minds that are not easily enfeebled Minds that look beyond self to the cause and result of every movement made. Then we are in a fair way to endure hardness as good soldiers. We need minds that can see difficulties and go through with them with the wisdom that comes from God that can wrestle with hard problems and conquer them. The hardest problem is to crucify self to endure hardness in spiritual experiences, training the soul by severe discipline. This will not, perhaps, bring the best satisfaction at the first, but the after effect will be peace and happiness. Letter, page 43. I'm not too sure that there is anything for me to say here because it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory that we go to God if we need to have a discipline of mind. Only God can help us with this hard problem and conquer them. Straightforward. Part 3. Christ has power to invigorate and restore. 
And while Christ opens heaven to men, the life which he imparts opens the heart of men to heaven. Sin not only shuts us away from God, but destroys in the human soul both the desire and the capacity for knowing him. All this work of evil, it is Christ's mission to undo. The faculties of the soul, paralyzed by sin, the darkened mind, the perverted will, he has power to invigorate and to restore. He opens to us the riches of the universe, and by him the power to discern and to appropriate these treasures is imparted. Education, page 28 and 29. Yes, and right now we are in a dying state. Mind, character, and personality. Those are in a dying state because mm, some of us are not going to Jesus who can actually invigorate this. And the same way he can actually um, cleanse the leper, then he can also cleanse us from sin. The same way we, he can, uh, we can have a, a perverted mind or a perverted character or a perverted personality is the same way Christ can actually change it and restore it to what it was supposed to be in the first place with a pure mind, a pure character, and a pure personality. So if we need to get better, the only place we can find that remedy is in Jesus Christ only. Let's go to the next part. Either God or Satan controls. Satan takes control of every mind that is not decidedly under the control of the Spirit of God. Letter 57 So you don't have to choose Satan for him to choose you. That's the point. The moment you don't choose God, then you choose Satan by default. And let me actually point out something, something here that when the Bible says something about wicked, it doesn't mean you are a murderer or an adulterer or something like that. It simply means somebody who is not on God's side. So if you don't have, if you don't allow God to take control of your mind, then by default it's gonna be Satan, whether you chose him or not. Part number five, every sin cherished weakens the character. And let none flatter themselves that sins cherished for a time can easily be given up by and by. This is not so. Every sin cherished weakens the character and strengthens habits and physical Mental and moral depravity is the result. You may repent of the wrong you have done and set your feet in the right path, but the mold of your mind and your familiarity with evil will make it difficult for you to distinguish between right and wrong. Through the wrong habits form, Satan will assail you again and again. Christ's Object Lesson Page 281. If you have not noticed, the moment you do something bad, you tend to do it again. I would say, for example, let's take an example on sexuality. And it can be it can be music, it can be movies, it can be cannabis, it can be marijuana or tobacco or any of these things. Anything that you do wrong or any wrong thing that you do, I should say, you tend to do it more and more and more, usually. And that's because Satan knows that if I got him or if I got her yesterday, then I can actually get him or her again today and tomorrow and next day and the day after that and next week, next month, next quarter until he tries all his best to have you forever. Part number six. 
the teacher's psychological qualifications. The habits and principles of a teacher should be considered of even greater importance than his literary qualifications. If he is a sincere Christian, he will feel the necessity of having an equal interest in the physical, mental, moral, and spiritual education of his scholars. In order to exert the right influence, he should have perfect control over himself and his own heart should be richly imbued with love for his pupils, which will be seen in his looks, words, and acts. He should have firmness of character and then he can mold the minds of his pupils as well as instruct them in the sciences. The early education of youth generally shapes their characters for life. Those who deal with the young should be very careful to call out the qualities of the mind that they may better know how to direct its powers so that they may be exercised to the very best account. 3T, page 135. I also think that this one is straightforward, so I'm not going to add any comment on that one. The last part men to become a new creature. Men are to become the subjects of Christ's kingdom. Through the divine power imputed to them, they are to return to their allegiance. By laws and resources, God has ordained a heavenly communication with men's spiritual life that in its action is as mysterious as the science and operation of the wind. Christ declared, My kingdom is not of this world. While it imprints its influence upon earthly governments, it cannot take the slightest imprint from them without marring the divine similitude. So spiritual is the character of God's work upon the human heart that receives it, that it makes everyone a new creature without destroying or weakening any capability God has given to man. It purifies every attribute fit for connection with the divine nature. That which is born of the spirit is spirit, and when man is born from above, a heavenly peace pervades the soul. Manuscript Release 1, 1897 And what we have here is we should become new creatures in Christ, as it says in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that the old things must be put away and the new ones to, to receive. So we have a, we have something here to work on in our lives, whether you're a teacher or not. There are things that we need to work on to get better. And yes, anxiety and depression, they have a remedy for it. And the remedy, of course, is that is Jesus Christ. So that was it for today. I hope to see you guys again next time. Until then, bye for now. Marvel out.